Hi friends. Have you ever thought about how people can be like Christmas trees? Some are prickly with never a kind word to say. Some are sappy, every little experience fraught with emotion. Some are fragile, every little pressure too much stress. And some are lopsided, thick and strong on the outside, but thin and weak on the inside. An imperfect tree may not look like much to most people, but all it takes is one person to recognize its value and beauty, to buy it and to take it home and enjoy it. In a similar way, we imperfect people may not look like much to each other, <laughs> but God looks at each one of us, recognizes our value, and says, I choose you. I want to see you every day in my living room. <laughs> you are beautiful. When we come to realize that God accepts us, that God forgives our faults and failures, and that God purchases us as his very own, then we begin to change. The way we think about ourselves, the attitude that we have toward other people, the way we spend our money and take care of the environment, the way we serve the poor, everything changes. It's the beginning of the transformation of our life. You might call it a new birth. At Christmas time, we talk a lot about birth, especially the birth of Jesus. It's also a good time to consider our rebirth or new birth in him. Every heart can be a manger in which Christ is born anew and we are born again. When a baby is born, he or she needs to be nourished, to grow, and to learn how to live as part of a family. The same is true for Christians who are reborn. First, we are reborn into an awareness and an acceptance of God's grace, God's unmerited, unconditional, unlimited love in Jesus. And then we have to be nourished by the teaching and example of Jesus, reading and studying the scriptures in community, praying, worshiping. As we continue to feed our faith, it grows and matures, resulting in outward behavior that more and more closely resembles the life, teaching, and example of Jesus. Just as a child's maturity involves learning how to relate positively and effectively to others, so our spiritual maturity includes not only learning, but also choosing to act in ways that are consistent with the attitude of Jesus and that build up and unify the community of faith. In the Apostle Peter's first letter, he writes, now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. Now, in other places in the scripture, the metaphor of milk is used to indicate immaturity in faith. But here, Peter uses the metaphor in a positive way, saying that milk is essential to grow and mature into salvation. Just as a newborn baby requires milk to be nourished sufficiently and to grow properly, a newborn, reborn, born-again Christian requires a vital relationship with Jesus, spiritual milk that tastes of the goodness of the Lord in order to mature in faith and to grow in discipleship. In our house, the very last thing we do on Christmas Eve before we go to bed is to set out cookies and milk for Santa. This year, that will trigger in my heart and mind 
gratitude for the spiritual milk of a relationship with Jesus Christ and the sweetness of his love. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again next week.